Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Old Barn Homestead uh, channel. I hadn't made a video on this channel in a long time. And uh, so I thought I would uh, just make you a quick update on a few different things. I'm inside the living area now and it pretty much looks the same last, as the last time I've shown anything about it. Yeah, it's a little messy in here, but uh, that's all right. I just made this for my son and daughter-in-law to give to my daughter-in-law's grandmother. And yeah, that's my daughter's wallet that she left down here. Not that you guys are interested in knowing about that, but um, anyway, we'll walk out into the shop. I finally, uh, this wall here, you know, I've never finished that in. I finally decided that uh, it's it's ready to finish in. The, the, the rough plumbing that I was waiting on is done. And uh, I bought some fence pickets that are like a dollar and something each. So I'm gonna use those. It'll kind of give it a pallet wood look to it without you know, me having to tear a bunch of pallets apart. So as you can see, I'm still painting in here. Um, just, I've had a few things to paint lately. And uh, you can see I got that sheet pulled off the plasma table. Um, lathe, mills, table here kind of messy. And uh, the sucky thing about when I have to paint, I have to pull everything uh, that I keep, normally would keep in this area, which is namely this. And, um, yeah, you can see my other metal storage thing back there. It's just, it's really, uh, out of control. So my belt sander, I've got it apart. I finally got the parts for it. Uh, the cylinder here, I think I've shown this in a couple of videos. This shaft was broken and I was able to order the replacement shaft, but I can't get it apart. You guys might uh, have an idea about this. These are, um, I don't know what you call those, some kind of nut uh, insert that holds these shaft in, shafts in, and I, I can't get them out. You know, the screwdriver wants to, to tear out of the slot, you know, the slotted screwdriver. So I don't know if I should just come in here and cut that and then just maybe just use some all thread. There's nothing about these being countersink that, that makes them need to be countersunk. You know, there's plenty of room in my application that I could do something different there. Okay, so I got... Another project, I want to build myself a bed. I, I've never actually had a bed here. My mattress and box spring are sitting on the floor. And I wanted to use some really large fasteners on, on this bed and just make it as beefy and industrial as I can. Um, this is $200 worth of nuts and threaded rod. So, And I'm going to need about 16 of those bolts total about 8 inches long, which obviously I'd need a lot more of this. So what I bought was uh, some oil field piping that's a dollar seventeen a foot. So the six inch section of that, you know, cost me a dollar uh, versus, you know, whatever, uh, about fifteen twenty dollars for a six inch section of that to cut these bolts down. So I'm going to use this, and yeah, I mean, I could thread the end of it. I could have done that and welded up the end or something. But so I'm going to weld on a section of the threaded rod that'll just serve as a nut on the end. And then these six by six by three sixteenths tubing are gonna be the posts for my bed. And, um, you know, maybe it'll be something I can sell the CAD files for. I had Eco Mouse Design uh, help me come up with uh, the CAD for that. And then I'm gonna use this, uh, some of this piping right here, six inch piping to make some casters out of for it. And I'll, I'll come up with a plasma cut center to go in it and some kind of a bearing set up so it'll have some custom built casters custom uh threaded rod and uh yeah so um one of the things that i never really showed on video back in the summer i did a project where i made a bunch of stainless stuff and um, i used the extra money i made on the project to buy this uh htp invertig 221 to replace my uh what five-year-old um eastwood tig 200 which the eastwood tig 200 was fine but it didn't have pulse and you know the the high frequency start was a little aggressive on it it would really kind of you know pop pretty hard on the startup and if you're trying to do thin stuff it you know sometimes wasn't the most forgiving but um i have all this stuff you know right here that i've had for years on this welding cart that i made back when i was in the the uh, you know in the garage and I never use it, but recently I did have to use it because I got delivery of that uh, six by six by three sixteenths pipe or tube 
square tubing there and that thing was about 400 pounds and i asked for it to be cut when they delivered it and they delivered it on a semi out here and um when i got it you know uh, i was I, I thought you know we could we could slide half of it at a time off into the back of my truck and um but it wasn't cut they delivered the whole thing so i just had to roll it off when i get a delivery via semi uh i have to think about you know how i'm going to get it off of their their truck in into my shop you know so sheet metal and stuff like that's pretty easy we just slide it off into the back of my truck and haul it you know haul it up here and and back it in there and unload it uh same thing with with thinner plates like up to quarter inch you know you can kind of slide off um so what i ended up doing was hooking that whole 20 foot or 24 foot stick up to my trailer or my um i drilled a hole in it put a put a bolt in it and drug it up here and then brought that hand plasma cutter the eastwood out there and cut it up into sections um and that made quick work of it but i mean you, that's probably about the third time ever in five years of owning that hand plasma that i've actually had to use it and so Anyway, I thought I'd show you an update on the uh, on the paint booth, uh, making some progress in here. So I got the ceiling in, and uh, spray foam insulation is is all in up there in the ceiling. And then I just did this half inch thick stuff. I wasn't really trying to like make this thing, you know, perfectly uh, sealed up from a insulation standpoint. Really, just want to keep the moisture out of it uh, to keep moisture from forming on the ceiling and having it drop down into, you know, something I just freshly paint, painted. So I, I had a couple of, uh, and you can see my uh, rapid air line that I got running in the wall. And uh, here's a good example of, you know, you had one job. It'd been nice if I could have got that back behind that post there and run it along down through there to get to my air compressors. But it's running in front of it, you know. I mean, it's just that's just how it is. I mean, there's no room back there to, to fish it back in there behind it. And then my other one job, I had these cut specifically to a length that they would fit in there, and I wouldn't have to cut them again. Well, guess what? They don't fit. Uh, I'm, I, you know, the way this drop ceiling, you know, comes down, I didn't, I didn't factor in something there. And then my other, you just had one job was. I was cutting out these openings on the plasma table, you know, rough openings, and using the uh, shape wizard built into, you know, Mach 4, and just drawing some, you know, just doing manually doing some straight lines. And um, I was getting ready. I just cut this straight line here, and I needed to cut one down this way, and I forgot to change the orientation. And it, instead of cutting this way, it went and cut that way. And I don't have any extra panels, and, you know, I probably should just buy another panel and make it nice, but oh well, that's what it is right now. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut a little strip and go over, you know, with a grinder, something that's got nice edges on it, and just go right over that. It is the paint booth, and you know, I've, I've messed around and milled around on this thing long enough, so nothing has to be perfect in here. I just need to get in here and get painting, and, and quit painting in the shop. You can see I got remnants of. R panels laying around everywhere that are kind of in progress but one of the things I'm thinking about doing is investing in um, one of those portable you know outdoor garages or carport things I think you know similar to what like a bomb 79 got a little while back and putting it out here you know uh, maybe a 20 by I don't know maybe a, a 18 by 30 or something and put all my metal storage outside so I can get it out of the shop, you know, because I, I really dislike having uh, stuff just, you know, because I don't, you, you know, like the metal, I don't unload and load from that like every day. And a lot of times I get custom sheets in for jobs that I don't, you know, I don't really, mostly what I keep here is uh, 16 gauge cold rolled. I have a little bit of aluminum sheets back there and a little bit of quarter inch and eighth inch, you know, just maybe a sheet or two. And I got a few random drops of half inch and three quarters, you know, just kind of laying around and uh, some other drops over here of uh, 
a bunch of three eighths drops that I had out of a big job. I was able to get a bunch of, uh, you know, three eighths plate there, uh, stacked up on that. But I hate to just have it in here, you know, for what little bit. It's not like on a daily basis I've got this thing over here loading and unloading sheets, you know, back and forth. I mean, you know, I, I use a sheet or two a week of 16-gauge cold roll, and then everything else is just kind of on a job-by-job -job basis. But, you know, uh, you guys saw that Jeep, you know, so when I had it in here, I would get rid of my paint stuff and get the plastic up off the store off the floor and slide the gantry over that way make plenty of room right here to work on that jeep project and that was fun i enjoyed that i have part two of that video coming up pretty soon but anyway as you can see i got kind of a mess in here you know i got a lot of different projects in flight you guys have seen this old lathe i've uh i've taken all of the um Oh, what do you call those the the glass inserts or they're plastic really and they were all dry rotted a lot of the oil levels were below where they should be because those were busted out and, and the oil had leaked out so I've got all those taken out and I bought a bought some some plastic sheet I think off of uh, either Amazon or McMaster and I've started making the um, I've got all these cleaned up the covers for them and um, and then I just started drilling out some with a hole saw and um i've got one completed and you know sanded down so that it actually fits drilling them with a hole saw just really kind of mangles them up and so forth but i've got all the rest of them all the rest of the bevels are have been cleaned up and bagged and tagged all the bolts and everything they're ready to go back on so uh i just need to finish getting those done and um you know, but I'm not going to put them back on until I get the whole thing, you know, the rest of it painted. Um, I've kind of been kicking around the idea of a CNC retrofit for this. I don't know what you guys think about that. But going back and forth with Wes Johnson, um, you know, about it. <clears throat> and I found a couple of other guys. And then um, this one company called Mock Motion that, that uses a version of Mach 4 to retrofit bigger older machines older mostly older cnc machines they their customers are people that you know have older big massive cnc machines that the controls fail on them and rather than trying to troubleshoot and figure that out they just modernize it and put a version of mach 4's control on it i guess they're having success with that um you know you can say what you want about mock i mean it for me it's super stable i don't really you know, I found a couple of quirks with it. Like one is you you don't really need that. You don't really want to have anything else running on this. Like a couple of times I've put video capture software on here so that I can take videos, you know, capture of me doing stuff and overlay that into my YouTube videos. And that that video capture will will cause my you know machine to act funny. And then the other one was Windows updates. You know, once I got that d disabled. Um, you know, that, that pretty much, uh, took care of that. So speaking of that, uh, Matthew over at, uh, wide vision metalworks, uh, by the way, he's got a great channel. I love seeing what he does and all the stuff he does, you know, the DIY builds and stuff he does with hydraulics and all that, uh, is really, uh, really neat. But he had asked, uh, he, he actually bought a, a true cut gantry kit and he's in the process of building it. And he had asked about, um, in an email and I've, I've been hesitant or not hesitant. I just haven't had the time or taken the time to get him his answer. But, um, he was asking about the, uh, limit switches. So here's the limit switch on the Y. Uh, let me take the air pressure off of this. Oh, it is off. Huh? Why is it not sliding? There it goes. So the limit switch on this one, I've got it temporarily, uh, taken off so that I could get more uh, space on my table. But you got these two, this is the kind of limit switch they use. And you got these two little, you know, pins that go in here and tighten up and you can see the stud that they use. It's just a little piece of uh, plastic tube on a, on a nut and bolt to catch it. That's one style that they've used. And my other table that I had from them had that style everywhere. I think what they've gone to is a newer style. Let me show you. Um, over here i was cutting a bunch of r panels and that's why i got this just slid off and i got a couple of flags to make so i'm gonna have to pull it back up and and um 
and work on that. But let me uh, pull this down and show you this, the one that's on this one here. So they, they've just got this little T bracket. I think this is what you sent me in the email and you can see the, the wire, uh, the, the stud or pin coming down there. Hopefully you can see that good. And you can see there where it's going to catch that and trip the limit on it. So that's the style they use. And then here's the other one down here where it catches this one. So he, he bought a gantry kit, which is the controller and the gantry, and he's building his own table. They, they have full blueprints and plans, but maybe some of the, you know, like specific details aren't really clear. And even True Cut themselves have, have changed their, you know, it's one of the good things about them. You could say good and bad, but is they're constantly updating their, you know, the kind of builds they, you know, their, the way they build their tables and they're always trying to make them better. So, um, anyway, Matthew, I hope that helps you out. And, uh, Hey, it's good to see uh, everybody over on this channel. Normally when I show anything like an, you know, shop update or whatever, I try to clean up or I try to, you know, not show the mess, but this is, you know, this is what it typically kind of looks like when I have, you know, a few different projects going at a time, uh, some internal projects and, you know, the projects I'm working on, you know, like they don't stay in here long. I get them, I finish them and I get them out, you know? And, uh, so it's, it's not like when you look around, you're going to see a bunch of projects in flight because, you know, normally they're one, they take me a day or, or so at the most to make and I get them, get them in, get them done and get them out of here and uh, ship them out or customers come get them or whatever. But anyway, let me know what you guys think on this. Like I said, I, I've tried my best. I've used heat. You can see I heated it. I didn't want to heat it too much. Um, I don't know if they've got Loctite on them or, or what is going on there. But I appreciate uh, any thoughts on that. And if I just cut those and let it slide out from each end so I can put this new uh, shaft and, and cylinder in there. And I've got a rebuild kit for it as well. And that way I can get that goes on my belt sander. And so I can get that thing back up and running and, and get to using it and make use of it. So, all right, guys, hope you guys are doing well. And Matthew, I hope that helps you out. Uh, on the limit switches there and not too late. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you sooner. See you guys.